A very good afternoon to one and all. So we have with us Dr. Poonam Sayal. She is the associate professor here in the electrical engineering department. And she is an expert in this area of renewable energy. She has done a lot of work on solar, solar photovoltaic, solar thermal. And she has set up here. We have a 50 kilowatt plant, which was uh, like the initiative was taken by her. And she had set up the lab, uh, the, sorry, the whole setup. And apart from that, she had worked also in biomass uh, and I think many other things. She will be just uh, giving an intro. And she has a number of uh, papers to her credit in uh, National and International Journal. And I think she's an apt person to give you more insight on biomass utilization and for energy generation. So I just hand over the session to Dr. Poonam Seyal. She'll be handling. Thank you so much, Shimi. Okay, good job. Okay. So good morning everyone at all the centers, nodal centers as well as uh, the participants at our institute in the ETV studio. As uh, Shimi ma'am has told, I'm going to talk about the utilization of one of the important renewable energy source that is biomass. And uh, the, as ma'am has told that uh, I have done some work in uh, with, repair to, with regard to solar uh, uh, energy also. So I just uh, just to continue where she uh, just left is that we have installed a 50 kilowatt uh, solar PV power plant which is grid interactive and it is giving very good results. I just want to share this experience uh, apart from the biomass utilization with you initially now because I uh, we have felt that uh, there is hardly any maintenance uh, required for such grid interactive uh, type of solar uh, PV power plants and we will encourage rather uh, propagate such type of technology that you can also install in your uh, institute because it is a green uh, technology and uh, we also have the subsidy on the installation of such power plants. The, at present, uh, the subsidy is around 30 percent on the total utilization uh, uh, installation uh, charges of the solar PV power plants. And uh, uh, if you will go in for this, then the thumb rule is the cost of the power plant is around 1 lakh per kilowatt and the subsidy is 30 percent when it is grid interactive and when we will go in for solar PV type of uh, solar plant which is which is battery based battery backup then the cost is around 1.5 times that up of uh, our uh, grid interactive simple uh, solar PV power plant. So it is. Uh, it has really give us uh, gave us a very promising results, and that is why I'm sharing uh, this experience uh, with you. And we are also in the process of installing uh, solar steam concentrating based cooking system in our mess, and uh, that will also be the state of the art. And let it come up, and I am sure that you would uh, like to come here at our institute also and attend the various short term courses where will you will be actually able to observe. The, and uh, see all the uh, implementation of such type of renewable energy sources at our institute and also at the areas nearby. So I will welcome you all once again in this session and now I am going to talk about the biomass utilization. Uh, you, um, lean, uh, our other colleagues might have told you the importance of the renewable energy sources utilization and why they are most important is that they are the green technologies. They do not cause the environmental degradation, pollution, or other adverse effect to our environment and ecology, which is the very prime factor. Uh, although you know, we another factor which involves the uh, utilization of the various type of renewable energy sources is that uh, our conventional energy sources, that is like fossil fuel, they are depleting fast. But nowadays the scene is a little bit different. If you have, a, uh, if you regard the prices of the co uh, oil, though they are quite falling down and uh, so there is uh, you can say that uh, some scope that we will be able to utilize the fossil fuels for a longer time as predicted earlier but still the fossil fuels are limited in nature uh, no doubt about that and there is very much requirement to use the alternate renewable energy sources which uh, really are green technology and which are which contributes towards the sustainable development for the betterment of our future generations. Now, why the biomass is known as renewable energy source? The main thing is that it is a carbon neutral source because the quantity of the carbon which is released 
when either we do combustion or when the uh, our biomass matter is decomposed na naturally they release the same amount of carbon dioxide in the uh, in the atmosphere as they take in from the atmosphere during their growth so that is why it is known as renewable energy source now basically biomass is an organic matter and uh, uh, it is uh, derived from the living organisms organisms like plant and animal matter and in uh, we have a different uh, type of resources from which it, it can be derived and uh, it is one of the promising source of all the renewable energy sources which are available here although the topmost energy renewable energy source which is abundantly available in our country is solar but uh, the um, exploitation of that source is uh, till date is not much according to ministry of new and renewable energy sources which is uh, which has been established to propagate and disseminate and uh, encourage the usage of renewable energy sources they have uh, analyzed the data or how much we have uh, utilized or uh, the various renewable sources then uh, the solar energy is quite on the lower side around 2% of the total uh, potential is has been utilized so far while uh, we have uh, as compared to other energy sources and the wind is uh, has been exploited to the largest extent as compared to other sources we are uh, fifth largest producer of wind power in the world and um, and if, if we see the total picture of all the renewable energy sources like from the biomass from the wind energy from the solar and from the mini hydro then we have just tapped around 13% of uh, the our total resources to generate the power as compared to our conventional energy sources that is uh, like coal is there oil or gas is there so the input from the renewable energy sources is 13% when we talk about the power generation and the, since we have lot of potential in our country we have lot of renewable energy sources and the order is around 2.5 uh, 2 lakh for around 50000 megawatt and uh, that is why the government of india has also set up a target to achieve more uh, uh, energy uh, power from these renewable energy in our country and the target is producing 41400 megawatt by the coming few years. So one of the more uh, important uh, renewable energy source is the biomass. It is a biological produced matter which is based on hydrogen, carbon and oxygen. And it is basically derived from various sources which you might be knowing like wood is one of the source, agricultural crops are there, raw material from the forest, major parts of the household waste and byproducts from the timber industry. Now why it is known as a renewable energy and uh, it is a biodegradable matter and because the bioenergy is basically depends upon the process of the photosynthesis whereby solar energy is used to take the carbon dioxide from the air and convert it into the energy rich carbon compounds and subsequently these initial products if they can be converted into another energy rich forms. And this is also you can uh, biodegradable as compared to non biodegradable type of uh, our matter. So you might be knowing that biodegradable is that which decomposes uh, easily, naturally, as compared to non biodegradable resources like uh, materials like metal is there, plastic or glass is there. So uh, so that is the important other characteristic of our biomass material. Now. <coughs> We have lot of biomass potential in our country as uh, you can see and uh, the states which are having uh, highest biomass potential in our country is Maharashtra and that is of the order of around 2000 megawatt. Madhya Pradesh is having around uh, 1400 megawatts, Uttar Pradesh is uh, 1600 megawatts and Karnataka is having 1100 and so megawatt and so on even Kerala is also having lot of biomass it is more than 1000 megawatt so keeping into the view of these 
potential of the renewable resources in our country, uh, we can convert it into the useful form of energy, which can be directly used to meet our energy demands. Now, this biomass uh, can be tailored for the rural or urban environment and utilized in the domestic, commercial, or industrial applications. The major processes which are used to convert biomass into useful energies, one is thermal conversion, that is directly it is converted or burnt to produce heat energy. Another is biochemical conversion. The biochemical conversion, it involves microorganisms or enzymes, which helps in fermentation or further decomposition of the biomass. In the thermal uh, conversion, we have basically three main categories uh, through the of the conversion process. One is direct combustion, where it is burned directly. Another is gasification and pyrolysis, which is used to produce the solid, liquid, or gaseous biofuels through various processes. And in the biochemical uh, conversion, we have anaerobic digestion, where uh, in the absence of air, the decomposition of biomass takes place. And then it is a fermentation where we have enzymes or certain specific process through which the biomass is converted into liquid or gaseous biofuel to produce heat or to power the engine. When we uh, uh, think about the thermal processes of energy conversion of biomass, then traditionally what is being done is we burn biomass to create heat. Like in the villages, still more than 80% of the rural households, they depend upon the traditional biomass fuels for meeting their cooking energy demands. This is as per 2011 census, just see, very few uh, percentage of households have access to the LPG or other cooking resources. So, and the, but the problem is the very low efficiency, as you can see, it is just 5 to 15 percent. And another is the smoke, emission of smoke from direct burning of this thing, which is very much harmful to the, uh, for the women who are cooking in the kitchen, and it, uh, they face a lot of problem with regard to it, and that is why they suffer from diseases like asthma or other lung releases, uh, related uh, diseases. So it is very important that we use it in an efficient way. And that is why uh, the technology has come, uh, that is uh, smokeless chula, where there is a chimney which is provided with the chula, so that when the uh, we burn the biomass, the smoke goes out uh, from the chimney outside in the environment rather than uh, the it just coming into the kitchen and and uh, we have lot of problems with um, related to health of the women who are exposed to such a large quantity of smoke throughout the day. So um, generally, what is being done? It is used directly for heating, cooking, and industrial processes, or indirectly to generate electricity, as we know in the power stations and. Uh, at bi uh, biomass power plants, biomass is burnt in the boiler to produce high pressure steam, which in turn drives a turbine to generate electricity. Here, the conversion efficiencies are low, it is just 20 to 40 percent. Another process of uh, utilization of biomass into energy is the pyrolysis. So, it is uh, the oldest method whereby we produce the charcoal. Here, biomass is heated in nearly uh, the absence of oxygen. Very small quantity of oxygen is present and it is heated at quite high temperature at around 200 to 300 degrees Celsius. And it produces, uh, due to this process, it is decomposed and it produces a dark liquid called pyrolysis oil, a gas which is syngas and a solid residue which is co called biochar. Charcoal is almost pure carbon with about twice the energy density of original wood and it is easier to transport and store this product as compared to our biomass. Here minimum uh, 5 tons of wood is required for production of around a ton of charcoal. Another process uh, for conversion of biomass to give us uh, the useful energy, it is known as densification. It is also a physical process. One is a production of, uh, this is uh, the production of pallets and briquettes. 
Now the briquetting process it includes the process of compacting the loose biomass into a uniform dense form. So this can be done by by pressure putting on the pressure on the biomass in a special machine which is known as briquetting machine and uh, sometimes we also add a little uh, other uh, material compound so that we get a uh, better form of our briquettes. Here the biomass which can be used which is suitable for densification is should have relatively low moisture content it should be less than 15 percent which is available in the biomass resources like stalks husks, bark, straw, shells, pits, seeds and straw dust etc. So as compared to loose biomass it is a better quality fuel which is easier to transport, store and easier to handle also. Another process of densification it is known as torrefaction. It produces pellets through high temperature oxygen removal process which is similar of making the charcoal. It is a mild pyrolysis process where partial decomposition of biomass takes place and solid biomass is torrefied. Now this uh, biomass is also heated at around 200 to 320 degrees Celsius. It loses 20% of its original mass but retains 90% of its energy. So it has 30% higher heat content in comparison with the original biomass. Another important characteristic of uh, the pellet is that it is hydrophobic, that it does not absorb moisture from air and it has a good potential for usage in the coal power stations. Now another process by which we use uh, the biomass uh, that is the biochemical. To, for the production of biogas, bacteria is used which breaks down the biomass and as a byproduct methane is produced which is a clean fuel resource for generating heat and power. Now biofuel it is uh, primarily derived from sugarcane, maize, beets and other starchy crops. It is uh, produced due to fermentation. Here simple sugars are converted to alcohol and carbon dioxide. Here uh, the bacteria is added and yeasts and enzymes produce biomass liquids which cause biomass materials to ferment and change into alcohol. Similar process is used to turn agriculture products into ethanol. Now ethanol uh, is as you might be knowing it is a, a colorless liquid and uh, it is mixed with the gasoline to make an ethanol gasoline blend fuel for running up uh, our engines or for even for uh, using it as uh, our uh, transport in the transport section uh, sector like up to 85 percent of ethanol and 15 percent of the petrol is successfully being used in various transport vehicles in USA, Sweden and uh, Brazil. Here in the Brazil even 100 percent of the ethanol has been used for running the vehicles. So it is also a very promising technology. Now thermochemical process is the process where as, uh, in where the biomass reactors they heat the biomass in the low oxygen environment and produce the producer gas. This gas basically have a carbon monoxide, hydrogen and methane. The energy of uh, content of this uh, producer gas is one tenth of the natural gas. It can fuel steam generators, combustion turbines and combined cycle technologies. It is good for running internal combustion engines. Here you can uh, see the picture of the biomass gasifier. So basically it is a reactor, it is a closed reactor which converts biomass into clean gaseous fuel by heating the biomass in the limited oxygen where the solid biomass it breaks down to form a flammable gas which is called a producer gas which is having a calorific value of around 1000 to 1200 kilocalories per cubic meter and it consists of carbon monoxide, hydrogen, carbon dioxide, methane and nitrogen. The producer gas it is fed into the diesel engine and to let the engine operate in the dual fuel mode 
thereby reducing the diesel consumption by more than 70%. Here initially the uh, engine is started with the diesel and later on uh, after a few minutes we uh, uh, induct the uh, our producer gas uh, slowly and uh, uh, like uh, initially we just uh, let it uh, consecutively in consecutive steps we increase the uh, the output of this our producer gas and we decrease the uh, diesel inlet uh, to the inlet of the engine so up to 70% of the diesel can be saved when we use this and it has been uh, found quite successful in the industries the usage of this gasifiers and uh, they the mm, there are very good case studies especially in the southern region in the industries where it, this uh, renewable energy source is being used to generate power now this can be directly burned in the furnace or furnace also to generate the process heat the moisture content of the material which should be used for uh, for generating the power in the biomass gasifier it should be less than 20% and generally this a type of fuel is firewood coconut shell corn flour stem sawdust rice husk and cotton stalks and uh, using gasifier 1 liter of oil can be saved through use of either around 4 kg of wood or about 5 kg of rice husk and the payback periods is 2000 to 5000 hours of operation depending on the capacity of the gasifier and 1 gram of k, k sorry 1 kg of uh, biomass it produces around 2.5 to 3 cubic meter of the gas uh, the, i have visited to some of the industries uh, uh, in the northern uh, side of our country and uh, i have seen that uh, in the industries i was talking with one of the expert in the in our punjab region now uh, here the problem is that the type of uh, biomass waste which we receive is of mostly in the form of husk or sawdust and it is very difficult to uh, the handling of this type of material this is one of the major uh, problem which they are facing and they told me that so thereby here in northern region the technology has uh, the not shown that much promising utilization if effectively in the field as compared in the south where they have a very good uh, material like coconut shell which is uh, quite easy to handle when we compare to the uh, rice husk and other type of material this is one of the you can say hindering factor for propagation of this technology in the northern region uh, maybe some research or uh, projects can be taken to deal with this problem by the students also <laughs> to generate 1 kilowatt hour of power we require around 1.5 kg of wood in the biomass uh, gasifier and the power generation uh, for industry through diesel generator set which operates on the dual uh, fuel mode is found very much successful in textile mills dyeing and processing units foundries tea factories coir industries rice mills etc it is also found effective in for heating in tea coffee drying and processing units food processing tile making rubber and oil processing units cooking etc and also it is very successful for the electrification of rural and remote areas where uh, we don't have a uh, electricity supply and and also for irrigation pumping like uh, if you see uh, uh, if you see and uh, various uh, our interact with the persons who are working in this area or you see uh, to the in, uh, through the internet various sites you will see that certain non government organizations they are doing very good work by installing renewable energy sources in the rural remote areas where still uh, the they have lack of electricity either it is not uh, been uh, transmitted to that particular area because it is a hilly terrain or uh, other some problem is there there is, uh, they have uh, they are installing successfully solar photovoltaic power generation plant or where the area like in the remote areas of uh, up or bihar where these ngos are doing wonderful work and they have using biomass gasifi gasifiers for giving the energy to the rural areas which is very much required for the development of any area as we know so this is one of, these are another things in which uh, uh, we can see the fu promising future that is for electrification of the 
Now, when we talk about the production of biogas, which is generally being produced by fermentation of cow dung, that is the cattle, uh, you can say, waste. You see, uh, we are in this way, we have got a very good potential to use this resource, which is otherwise not being that effectively utilized by the traditional way. Because of our country, we have the largest livestock population in the, in, in the world. Right? We are more than 480 millions of cattle in our country. And um, India ranks first in cattle and buffalo population, second in goat population, third in sheep, and seventh in the poultry uh, uh, population when we compare it with the world status. So, and uh, biogas, the main resource used is the uh, dung of the cattle. So, we have a lot of uh, promising you can say area to uh, to use this resource for our energy needs like you see traditionally what is being done we have a kettle dung right we make kettle dung cake and then they are burnt but the problem is that there the efficiency of uh, kettle dung burning is around 11 percent or so 11 to 13 percent while when we allow the uh, cow dung or cattle dung to ferment in the closed digester in the absence of air that is through biogas technology then we get uh, gas also which is uh, methane gas mainly which have around 40 to 60 percent is the methane gas in the biogas generated and also we have digested slurry that is the gas we get and in addition to that we get a organic manure which is very much required uh, for our country because we are uh, mainly we are uh, most of the persons are really uh, working in the agriculture sector in the rural areas wow. yeah farmers so it is uh, having uh, you can say twin benefit one is it can be used for cooking when we allow it to use the biogas technology and another it is very good for the organic uh, as a more organic manure source also so we have uh, lot of potential and uh, since we have 500 million poultry birds around and 280 million of bovine animals in our country and it gives a very efficient fuel for cooking lighting and helps to generate motive power it gives a uh, good organic manure also which is very much rich in the nitrogen humus and other micronutrients uh, which is lacking in the our chemical fertilizers the micronutrients and that is why our uh, soil health is also adversely being affected when we are using uh, this our fertilizers chemicals so it is very much uh, required and uh, we should encourage and uh, make aware the farmers and all the persons who are engaged in the agriculture related activities that such type of organic manure should be promoted to be utilized in the in the our fields now the digested study it can be used for manuring the crops and the, the application of such organic manure it reduces the salinity or alkalinity of the soil and increases the porosity and water holding capacity thereby increase uh, better for the betterment of the soil health this digested study is applied at the rate of uh, 10 tons per hectare for irrigated land and at the rate of 5 tons per hectare for the dry farming and it, it has been uh, seen by applying this organic manure as compared to our chemical fertilizer that the yield has grown up by 20 percent over the years immediately you won't find the results will be that encouraging but over the years they will improve and another thing is when we talk of manure application is that it should be gradually replaced uh, it should gradually replace the chemical fertilizer like immediately if you uh, pro uh, propagate and tell the farmer that he should replace all the chemical fertilizer with the organic manure then the yield of the um, uh, crop will be less as he might be getting with the fertilizer application uh, so you have to um, the, the application of the manure has to be uh, taken in the steps like first time it may be 25 percent of the manure should be organic and the rest should be uh, chemical and the next cycle we can add 10 to 20 percent more and gradually we should increase the application of organic manure and the uh, chemical manure can be reduced later on uh, in gradual steps so that will good give better crop yield to the farmers and thereby they will they will not lose their incomes also so <coughs> Now, the one of the major aspect of the biogas generation is fermentation 
through the enzymes or microorganisms which is anaerobic in nature and that is in the absence of air they grow and thereby they ferment and we get a very good gas which is having the main co constituents as methane which is, ranges from 55 to 65 percent carbon dioxide is 20 to 40 percent and we have impurities like hydrogen hydrogen sulfide and nitrogen with small traces of water 2 to 7 percent some uh, very minor percentage of oxygen around 2 percent and same with the case of nitrogen and 1 percent of ammonia or even lesser than that and hydrogen sulfide. When we see the properties of this biogas, this biogas is lighter than air. It is around 20 percent lighter than the air and the temperature, ignition temperature of this gas is around 650 to 750 degrees Celsius. It is an odorless and colorless gas. So it is just like when you will see, actually see this, it will just appear you like uh, you are burning the LPG gas, which is also having a clear blue flame. Only thing is that uh, since its calorific value is lesser than the LPG, therefore the, uh, the burners, the size of the holes in the burners are bigger as compared to our LPG based of chula. So calorific value is 20 megajoules per cubic meter. It burns with 60% efficiency in conventional biogas stove. And, all, and also the thing is that we cannot, we should not use this. Uh, although you uh, people have done in the field that they have used the same chula as being used with the LPG type. But what happens is it contains moisture also. So and the calorific value is less, so they will have a lesser quantity of gas, and after some times they will find it difficult also because of the retention of moisture in the pipes and also with the small holes through which we have the uh, uh, our gas. So it is recommended that uh, the chulas, which are specially designed for the biogas plants, they should be used, which will give better and <coughs> output and for efficient cooking. The mainly. Uh, if we see the equivalence of biogas as compared to other conventional energy sources, one cubic meter of biogas is equivalent to 0.52 liters of diesel. It is equivalent to 0.62 liters of kerosene, 3.50 kg of wood, 12.30 kg of kettle dung cake, 0.43 kg of LPG, and 1.46 kg of kilogram of coal. And when we see the nutrient content of this, uh, the slurry which we get from the, the biogas plant that is known as digestive slurry as compared to simple organic manure that is farm yard manure. Where what do the farmers do? They dig a pit, put the uh, material, the organic waste inside it and just cover it up with the mud and after six months they are able to get the manure. But still this organic ma manure is having higher content of nutrients as compared to that organic manure. Like the, here the nitrogen content is around 1.5 to 2 percent as compared to farmyard manure which is 0 0.5 to 1 percent. Phosphorus and potash is 1 percent as compared to 0 0.5 to 0.8 percent which is contained in the farmyard manure. So it is better than that also. And the main sources which are used for uh, generation of biogas include excrete of cattle, piggery waste, poultry droppings, algae, crop residues paper waste, human waste, garbage kitchen waste. Now it has been found the best usage, uh, the enzymes which uh, they use to convert the uh, our biomass waste into the biogas, it is, that is the kettle dunk. Although, so what is being recommended is that there should always be some quantity of kettle dunk and it can be mixed with other type of waste to give us the efficient biogas production. There are three phases of anaerobic digestion. Uh, the first one is enzymatic hydrolysis. Here hydrolytic bacteria, it acts upon the uh, our kettle waste and fat, starches and proteins, they are broken into simple compounds like fatty acids, alcohol, carbon dioxide, hydrogen, ammonia, sulfides. In the acid formation, acidogenic bacteria acts and it converts the simple compounds which are uh, obtained from the enzymatic hydrolysis process into acids, mainly acetic acid, hydrogen and carbon dioxide and volatile solids. In the last stage, the methanogenic bacteria, they act for methane formation. 
Here the organic acids which are obtained from the acid formation stage, they are converted into methane and carbon dioxide. And this is obtained by using mainly two types of biogas plants. One is floating gas holder type, which is also known as KVAC type. And you might be knowing KVAC is a short form of Khadi Village Industry Commission. It was a person um, who, uh, in, who really made up and, and uh, he invented this technology, the design of this technology. He was, it, it was related to KVIC. And another is the fixed dome, that is the Deen Bandhu type. Here, Afro, uh, he, it, the person from the Afro, it worked upon it and thereby the design was evolved. In this type of biogas plant, we have, uh, we mix dung and water in 1 is to 1 ratio generally uh, what happens is the farmers they put one bucket of water and one mix one bucket of cattle dung in it in the inlet and thereby it is mixed and then it is fed into the digester. You can see the cross-sectional diagram of the KVIC model of biogas plant. Here we have a digester and you can see lower side that is brick masonry structure is there that is known as digester where decomposition of the uh, our waste takes place on the left uh, on the left side there is a mixing pit there is the that is the inlet tank where we mix water and cow dung with the stirrer and then it is fed into digester after say uh, 30 to 40 to 50 days depending upon the climatic conditions of the particular area the gas is uh, decomposed, the, uh, the metal is decomposed and it is acted upon the various enzymes as we have discussed earlier. And we get a, um, the biogas, which is lighter than air, it is filled up on the topmost uh, container. Or your, it is also known as gas collector chamber, or it is generally made up of mild steel. And then the digested study, it, uh, due to gravity, because the digested study is having lesser density. It is decomposed, no? So it is lesser uh, in weight as compared to our cow dung, fresh cow dung, which is fed, or cattle dung, which is fed into the digested plant. So it automatically rises up, and it is uh, we have the outlet of the uh, for the digested study on the right side. And it, just see one more point is that the mm, the inlet point should be a little bit higher as compared to the outlet point, right? Uh, this is the one of the design factor. Another is uh, that you can you will, you are seeing a in between the digester chamber there is a partition wall, right? This partition wall is made so that there should not be short circuiting of the raw material. That is, uh, if the capacity of the biogas plant is more than six cubic meter, this partition wall is made so that what happens is without fermentation or without decomposition, this uh, the the input material it should not directly go out without producing the gas. So for retaining it for a longer time and, and getting it fermented in a pr proper way, this, the movement, to increase the movement time, as you can see, first it will go to first chamber, then it will rise up, and then from the top wall, it will move down to the outlet chamber thereby. So it will take a longer time and better fermentation will take place. So that is why it is an important part that partition wall should be built up for more than 6 cubic meter of the capacity. And when we, uh, if you'll go and have a look, then it will, uh, the KVAC model type will look as, as you have seen. You can see in the picture. This is how it will appear to you when we we'll see the biogas plant. Here you can see the black color uh, top, uh, this container, it is known as gas digester. And the white color below the ground, that is the construction, that constructed part, it is, which is not, uh, you can see from here, that is the digestive cha digested chamber digester or you can say on the uh, on the right side if you will see there is a stirrer there is a handle and this is the mixing tank the inlet chamber is there right so uh, this is about the kvic type hanji hanji outlet. outlet is on the back side so that is why it is not uh, appear in the picture it is uh, just opposite to it and generally what happens is then when the from the outlet the in the layers fashion like First layer is of the mm, uh, slowly biodegradable material like uh, leaves or hay stalks, something uh, they are put in one to two inch thick on the pit. Over that, uh, a, a small, say, two to three inch thick layer of this slurry is put, and thereby alternately we put in uh, uh, the various type of uh, biodegradable materials along with this 
manure and this is kept for uh, some time and after that this uh, slurry uh, this can be uh, taken out and it can be used for uh, the, our agriculture purpose or directly it digested slurry can also be used if it is nearby the field now what happens is sometimes the field is away from the kitchen that is the source of cook where you we want to use the gas it should not be far away from the kitchen no otherwise how can we supply the gas so and then the fields are far away so what they do is they let it dry for some time and then they collect it uh, the manure and then they apply in the fields this is another way of utilizing the manure now the another uh, popular type of uh, biogas plant that is deen bandhu biogas plant here the we have the it is all underground it is underground brick masonry structure with dome at the top for the gas storage and uh, it is specially you can say it has a concave bottom and it is a spherical type right why is it is so because for the same volume the surface area is less so less material will be used lesser will be the cost its efficiency uh, so uh, the cost is around 40% less as compared to kvic type because in the kvic we have a metal dome so this that adds to the cost and another thing is that the dome because the moisture also comes out so what happens is the dome it has to be repainted after few years and after say uh, after one year or two years because of the the moisture to uh, corrosion to prevent the corrosion and after it, its life is limited to 10 years or so then it has to be replaced also the dome so that is why this hanji there is a is about the piche wala ye this one the last one about the kvic plant if i discuss you see this ha huh, the, the gas collection chamber no it is made of a mild steel and there is a moisture also because we put one is to one ratio water and kettle dung so jab evapor jab hamari gas move karti hai upar to sath mein moisture bhi thoda bahut evaporate hota hi hai right hai na and it is uh, you see it is uh, isko black color se paint kiya hua hai why so that it gets the uh, it collects the uh, heat from the sunlight because 35 degree celsius is the optimum temperature for generation of the biogas maximum generation is around 35 to 38 degree celsius and when the temperature goes down the production also uh, gets uh, decreased and that is why in winters it always produces lesser biogas as compared to summer so they the enzymes act like act like that but here you can see it is all underground so that we get the thermal insulation and good heat and uh, it is all masonry structure that is why its cost is less as compared to our kvic type of biogas plant now the only thing is here we have uh, the um, more than 100 cubic meter capacity of the plants can be uh, uh, constructed when we talk about the kvic type but for the uh, this deen bandhu type we have less than 10 cubic meter of the biogas or standard designs are available which i'll be uh, discussing with you in the coming slides and uh, the you can see how we require a skilled manpower the skilled technical manpower because you can see it is a spherical in structure right and there should be no leakage from the uh, walls of this uh, type of uh, it should be airtight our this thing our digester and all the unit of the biogas plant so we required a special technical manpower to construct it and uh, you can see how it looks from the outside it is just a dome you can see and uh, on the sides you can see the skilled labor working upon it to do this thing so it is recommended that uh, if you want to construct the deen bandhu model of the biogas plant you can approach to khadi village industry commission they have the standard design as well as well as the skilled manpower which can uh, which can which have been trained by them there are certain training programs for skilling them and another is you can approach the agriculture department then department of science and technology so these and agriculture universities also you know the uh, those persons they are uh, appropriate so that you can get the technical know how to install such type of pa uh, plants another thing important uh, i am coming to is uh, is the designing that will come later on i'll uh, which is very much connected with the input required or the feed material required per for the biogas generation now you can see in the slide that uh, for uh, there is a particular amount of the feed material required for generation of 1 cubic meter of the biogas like cattle dung if you are using we require 25 kg per day per cubic meter so larger the size 
more quantity of cow dung is required. Then poultry manure 12 kg per day, pig manure 20 kg per day, human excreta 35 users per day. And if we see the gas production from the various types of dung, it also varies from the different types. Like uh, for cattle, cows and buffaloes, the gas production per kg of dung in cubic meter is 0 0.023 to 0 0.040. For pig, it is much it is more that is 0.040 to 0.059 for poultry it is even better as compared to the earlier type of our animals here it is from 0.065 to 0.116 of uh, per cubic uh, meter gas production and human it is you can see 0 0.020 to 0 0.028 just you can say little bit lesser than the production of uh, as produced from the cattle dung Now, uh, it can be calculated that how much uh, uh, cattle dung will be available if we uh, want to construct a biogas in a particular location. Like um, in for the cow, for a single cow, it gives around 10 to 15 kg of dung in a day. Buffalo, around 15 to 20 kg. Pig is 2.5 to 3.5 kg and chicken, 90 grams. Now, the important part is the size. When we uh, anybody wants to install the um, biogas plant, then the person should know what will be the usage of the biogas plant. Like, uh, if uh, we have a capacity of three cubic meter and we have five six kettles, then it can be used for cooking of the persons of uh, food of for seven to eight persons. So, depending upon the size of the family, one should uh, think about the capacity which needs to be installed and also the quantity of the cow dung available because we need the raw material daily which is shown in this slide like for 4 cubic meter plant we require daily 100 kg of cow dung and uh, so the minimum number of cattle available uh, to that particular household should be 7 to 8 in numbers and it can it is sufficient to cook the food for around 10 members in a day the, the biogas plants also vary size and their spe uh, special designs are available, uh, standards designs are available. The smallest plant is a 1 cubic meter per day capacity and it produces around 35 cubic feet of gas per day. And uh, But this is uh, um, not generally uh, propagated and it is used for demonstration purpose only because it is suitable for preparation of food for only one person. The other standard sizes which are available are 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 10, 15, 25, 35, 45, 60, 85 and 140 cubic meter per day capacity. And now the if the plant size is not much, it is around 1 cubic meter to 10 cubic meter, then these plants come, at, uh, come under the family size plants. Whereas the plants which, uh, whose, uh, which capacities uh, varies from 15 cubic meter per day to 140 cubic per day, they are the largest size plants. They are known as community size or community biogas plant, which caters to the need of the institutions or community centers. Now, this classification is done mainly um, for the design part and also because uh, the subsidy pattern is also different of the government of India. They are usually the government also want to promote uh, these renewable energy sources and they uh, provide the subsidy for installing of these plants. Now, the subsidy now it varies from state to state also. So this has to be checked up with the state government and also maybe the there is a state renewable energy development agency in each of the state like in Punjab there is PEDA, Punjab Energy Development Agency. In Haryana there is Hareda, Haryana Energy Development Agency and similarly in UP it is NEDA and so on. So if the person is interested then it is uh, advisable that the person can uh, can contact the respective energy development agency and he will come or she will come to know what is the subsidy pattern and take the advantage of it also and another thing is when we talk of the size limitation uh, the teen bandhu type it is uh, up to 6 cubic meter capacity the design is available while kvic type it can be uh, the capacity can be built up up to 140 cubic meter of the biogas plant now the difference is that we are, uh, is due to the uh, the masonry structure, right? There is no uh, this uh, the metal that like uh, is not in all just bricks and our 
सीमेंट एंड दैट इज इन्वॉल्व कोई इसमें आयरन का या कोई वो रोल हम यूज नहीं करते बिकॉज ऑफ द कॉस्ट फैक्टर एंड दैट इज वाई उसकी स्ट्रेंथ इतनी ही बियर कर सकता है वो इससे ज्यादा कैपेसिटी की इट के नॉट बियर दैट मीन स्टडी स्ट्रक्चर right that is why the there is a limitation of the size when we talk about the deen bandhu plant as compared to kvsc type and because of the lower cost factor uh, the deen bandhu type is the most popular biogas plant across our country now as i have just discussed with you earlier that the um, optimum temperature for the generation of the biogas is at 35 to 38 degrees celsius so depending upon the climatic condition of a particular region we have a different retention point times that is how much time it will take to generate the gas like in the coastal areas which is karnataka andhra pradesh tamil nadu goa maharashtra kerala etc the retention day uh, time is just 30 days after 30 days we'll have full generation of uh, we'll have a uh, gas and while in the moderate areas like gujarat haryana punjab bihar uttar pradesh madhya pradesh rajasthan west bengal where there is the retention time is 40 days however in the hilly areas where temperature is quite less as compared to coastal and moderate areas where the temperature uh, here the retention time is much more it is 55 days to generate the biogas like in the areas of himachal pradesh sikkim kashmir and uh, hills of uttarakhand now the biogas can be utilized uh for lighting purpose also for dual fuel uh, engine also or for and for electricity generation also for different uh, purpose it different amount of biogas is required like cooking if we have a different uh, size of burners are available like for 2 inch burner we require 0.33 cubic meter per hour for 6 inch burner it is 0.64 cubic meter per hour of the biogas and per person per day cooking the gas requirement is 0.0 Uh, 0.24 cubic meter per day for lighting the lamp for 100 candle power we require 0.13 cubic meter per hour but it has been found that this uh, technology utilization is not much efficient as compared to other uh, tech, uh, utilization of this resource that is for cooking or for running dual fuel engine for dual fuel engine we a uh, fuel engine we where we can replace the diesel oil per a horsepower of the order of 70 to 80% we require point Uh, zero, 0.50 cubic meter per hour, and si almost similar quantity of biogas is required to generate electricity for of one kilowatt hour. And uh, even small IC engines uh, with generators can be used to produce electric electricity by using the biogas plant in the rural and remote areas, which have been point uh, found quite successful. you see uh, the biogas generation also depends upon certain factors because microorganism that is living microorganism organize uh, organisms are working upon the waste to give us the generation of the biogas and these organisms they uh, can survive and optimally do their work in certain conditions the, some of the important conditions are that one is the ph or hydrogen ion concentration it should be neutral Like 6.5 to 7.5, as we liked in our water also, you can see. Generally, the range of drinking water potable also we want that pH should be neutral, right? And the, here the microorganism they also want that they should it should be neutral environment under which they would like to work. And the temperature optimum for maximum biogas generation is 35 to 38 degrees Celsius. And uh, it should be noted that uh, when the temperature falls down by 10 degrees, say around 20 degree or so, then the production of biogas is half. and at 10 degree celsius the production almost stops so it should not be very uh, low temperature uh, then total solid contents that is 8 to 10% that is that is why we add 1 is to 1 by ratio the quantity of water because in the kettle dung we have 20% of the total solid content so to make it a uh, 10% we add equal quantity of water then carbon nitrogen ratio of input material is 30 is to 1 here nitrogen is required uh, for uh, fulfilling the protein requirements of the microorganisms while carbon is required for building the cell structure another is the uh, nutrients and uniform feeding that is as uh, they are living organisms and we also have a certain time to eat food similarly they also if we feed them daily at the same time then the generation of the biogas will be more 
as compared to if we irregularly feed them the cow dung to the biogas plant. Then another important is the mixing or stirring of the contents of generator so that uh, all the microorganisms have access to the food. Another important point is there should not be any toxic substance which should be mixed in the cow dung. Otherwise, it will kill the microorganism and our biogas production can be stopped. Now, another important factor related to the biogas is the selection of the site. That is, the distance between the plant and the site of the gas consumption should be less so that uh, we have the efficient, uh, you can say, transmission of our gas to the uh, to our kitchen and with, of course, with lesser cost also. So it has been found that for the plant of 2 cubic meter, the optimum distance is 10 meter. Another thing is that sunlight should fall on the plant because the temperature of 35 to 30, uh, 25 to 30 degrees Celsius is essential for gas generation at the good rate. And it should be minimum 15 meters from the wells or source of drinking water. It is very important. Why? Because the pathogenic bacteria, they are there in the cattle den. Okay. If it is the our source of water is nearby, then there might be a possibility of leakage of our waste into and it will be ultimately uh, mix up with the our point uh, source of the water, drinking water. And it will create the problem, health problems uh, in the vicinity. So this is very important. You see what happened was, it was uh, especially this thing uh, point should be taken into view. Uh, what happened in, there was a project uh, in the northern India where the, the some funding was provided to make it uh, uh, for the better sanitation and for the better utilization of dung rather than cooking uh, with the just uh, just combusting the material it was propagated that the uh, this uh, at each household of that particular village we should install the biogas plants then after some years of course we always whenever the funds are given the evaluation of the projects are always being done so an independent agency was asked to evaluate what was the effect of uh, the installation of biogas plant at the particular location it was found that the health of the persons of the, the where that will just deteriorated rather than improving because of the better sanitation and other and uh, cooking facilities also because of the installation of biogas plant so the main cause which was found was the, that this particular point that is minimum 15 meter distance from the wells or source of drinking of water was not kept right water source and they were nearby mm -hmm. uh -huh. so what happened was ultimately uh, due to some reason this uh, it was just percolated down the pathogenic bacteria it mixed with the source of the drinking water and people were having lot of infections and other problems diarrhea and water related diseases they were having and their health deteriorated overall so that is why it is very important when we design or when technically any technology uh, techn it may be proven uh, very much uh, feasible in the labs but when we want to install it at a particular size we should cite we should see other factors also which are very important like minimum distance and uh, like light sunlight should fall all these things these things are very important and not in case of only this technology but similarly in the case of other technologies also there are certain specific conditions in the labs whereby we test the particular technology, uh, their feasibility. But when the same type of environment is not uh, provided in the field, then that it is uh, generally people say that technology is not feasible. But it may be because of the other parameters which we have to consider when we install a certain technology, whichever it might be. This is a very important factor. The other thing is it should be near to the cattle shed because we should have the lesser, uh, you say, efforts for handling of the cow dung and so then uh, another is area should be free from the roots of the trees which are likely to creep and cause uh, the uh, damage to digester you see uh, like in our houses also we generally say that our chat pe in the roof or nearby our house we should uh, take into care that the uh, trees should not be grown very near because usse to, the roots they creep into and then they cross the cracks in our the masonry structures so here also these things should be kept into mind because otherwise what happened it will uh, break and uh, break all it will create the you can say crack the structure and ultimately we will not have proper functioning of the biogas plant and its generation will also be adversely affected 
then sufficient space for operation and maintenance is required it is recommended that we require 10 to 20 meter square area which is required per cubic meter of the gas mm, another important factor with regard to the biogas is that it should be recharged or cleaned and then again charged after every 10 years Uh, as I discussed that the optimum temperature for generation of the biogas is around 35 degrees but in the winters it is not possible because, because the, uh, the temperature of the environment is lesser as, as compared to the summer. So there are certain methods by which the biogas generation can be increased in winters also. One of the method is using warm water for dilution of dung. Another is that we dilute the dung slurry in the mixing tank and keep it all the way to warm up like by 3 o'clock you will see that it will the temperature of the our input feed material it will be uh, warmer as compared to in the early morning so then it can be fed the addition of organic matter containing high percentage of nitrogen like night soil and also mixing of digestive study because they have more microorganism and thereby it will increase the biogas generation Kitchen waste, green leaves, grass clippings, they can also be added after drying and mixing with the dung. Generally, 1 kg of uh, such uh, biomass can be added daily with 100 kg of dung and then uh, it can be fed into the plant. Another uh, option which is available is guys holder can be covered with the gunny bag or polythene sheets to provide insulation during nights. And the digested slurry of 2 liters can be added to 100 liters of fresh slurry to increase the bacterial population in digester. A tank of plastic sheet can be erected uh, so that it can retain the heat for, on the floating gas type of uh, plant. But here it will add the cost. The annual energy saving potential of the family size of biogas uh, bio plant is 1680 kilowatt hour while for community size it can may it can save 37,500 of kilowatt hour as compared to our traditional energy sources so we have a bright prospects of uh, using this uh, in a renewable energy source because, uh, because we have lot of cattle population so it is possible to establish more than 10 million biogas plants in our country and it if we install such capacities, uh, such uh, number of biogas plant in our country, it will provide energy to substitute commercial fuel which is equivalent to 6.77 million liters of kerosene which are valued more than rupees 34 million and it will also help in producing the organic manure to the extent of 74 million tons and thereby it will reduce the burden on exchequer by preventing the usage of the fertilizers. The potential of the biogas plant in our country is 120 lakhs but till now we have installed 48.2 lakhs of biogas plant so we have lot of potential to further work upon this technology. So the benefits of biogas include the, uh, the large cattle population which ensures the steady supply of raw material for running the biogas plant. We have over 240 million heads of cattle and buffalo and it which yields around 1000 million tons of cattle waste annually. It helps in reducing the deforestation also because it arrests the cutting of trees for firewood for cooking purpose. It helps in maintaining the ecological balance because it do not produce any greenhouse gas emission. Right? It helps in rural sanitation and uh, since you see uh, it is colorless and odorless gas and wherever it is whenever it is fermented there is no uh, you can say uh, no uh, this thing uh, we have no flies or other things when it is properly fermented so this also helps in uh, providing the better environment it has uh, all low capital cost and almost cost free maintenance and it also saves the drudgery of women which have to uh, otherwise go outside and uh, maybe more than uh, 3 to 4 kilometers or maybe so to collect uh, the wood and then to use it for the cooking purpose. For Deen Bandhu construction uh, we have a standard designs which can be accessed through this website uh, that which you can uh, later on uh, see if you if you are interested or to guide someone. 
a case study with respect to the bimethanation power plant uh, i'm just saying that how it can it has is really produced useful to for power generation also there is a, a plant which is in ludhiana and uh, it is uh, the plant design was made by the germany uh, company which is antec and the capital uh, expenses were 15 crore of rupees and it was uh, established in the year 2004 uh, here what happened was there is a, there was lot of dairies around like this lot of uh, population of cattle was available and rather than just what happened previously the all the waste it was just put into one of the uh, one of the source of you can say a small uh, uh, riverlet was flowing that is the buddha nala it was just put into that it was creating lot of problems and rather than just uh, wasting it it was used to generate the renewable energy source so it was installed uh, with the help of Punjab Energy Development Agency. The installed capacity was 1.06 megawatt. Power generation capacity was 14.9 megawatt per day maximum. And feedstock thereby required was 235 tons per day. And it has a fermenter to digester that is 5,000 cubic meter each. Two fermenters were there. Biogas yield was around 10,000 cubic meter per day and manure was also produced of the order of 15 tons per day and um, uh, because of uh, it was working very successfully so it was also received best green power plant in Asia by Asian Power in Bangkok and in, it was analyzed that in the year 2012 it gave around 2400 megawatt hour of energy and saved more than 2000 tons of carbon dioxide equivalent carbon footprints and uh, it also generated uh, it was found 59.7 kilowatt hour per ton that is 94 percent which was highest yield in November 2012. So this slide shows the uh, various uh, potential as well as installed capacity of different type of uh, renewable energy sources and uh, you see the biomass which has been used uh, it is around 11 percent which is has been utilized the potential uh, utilized for small hydro it is 19 percent for solar energy it is 2.65 percent and wind is it is more than 20 percent here the potential of biomass is more than 17,000 uh, in terms of megawatt while the installed capacity is around 2000 uh, megawatt it is very much advantageous uh, to utilize this biogas technology to improve to access of clean energy source and it will balance the use of fossil fuels which will uh, save them for further application and future generations it will reduce pollution and emissions from the conventional energy systems it reduces the dependency and minimizes spending on imported fuels it is very much suitable for small off-grid application which is uh, very effective and good for rural and remote areas where energy is very crucial for human development but not available such small energy it can also contribute to the local economy and create local jobs so thank you so much this was regarding the utilization of biomass now the session is open for discussion and for question answer 